Hello and welcome to another episode of Branding with Jade TV. And in this episode, I'm going to be elaborating on influencer marketing in more detail. So we have covered the basics on how to become an influencer and determining whether or not you actually do want to be an influencer. And so what I wanted to go into today is getting more in depth into what brands actually look for and how to brand yourself for success as an influencer so that you do get more of those yes responses from brands. Because after all, nobody wants to go out and get no's all the time. So let's take a look at what brands are actually looking for and what you can do to make sure that you stand out to the brands that you want to work with. Okay, so before I get into what brands are looking for, I want to bust a few myths about what you think they're looking for and tell you not to worry about these things. So a lot of people do get caught up on numbers and they think, I don't have a big enough following, there is no point me even reaching out to brands. But I really want you to stop thinking like that because I know people that have been offered amazing influencer deals when they've got less than a thousand followers. And it all comes down to having a really good niche understanding your product, understanding your audience, understanding your brand and who it is that you're trying to attract and what they're interested in and really having an engaged community because that's much more valuable to a brand than, like I said in a previous week, than say a celebrity with millions of followers that don't actually take action or really care what they share. And it's also much better than say somebody with hundreds of thousands of followers who just post ad after ad after ad and just is always sponsored content because their audience is going to start thinking, well, do they actually believe in these products or not? Because all they do is post ads. And so that kind of starts to discredit them and make them less authentic. And so Brands actually are starting to clue on to that and they want to work with people who are authentic and are genuinely caring about their audience and are being selective about the brands they work with and only promoting things that they genuinely do use and are passionate about. So your following is not the be all and end all and you need to realize that you can be an influencer with any size following as long as you are confident in yourself and your brand and you know how to approach brands in the right way then you can get those yes answers so that's what we're going to be talking about today now the next thing a lot of people hold back from is the fact that they think they need all this fancy equipment you need to have the latest cameras or the best videos and all of that kind of stuff let me tell you i have all of it i have a drone i have a gopro i have my dslr camera guess what i use 90 percent of the time my iPhone because it's easy, it's with me and I can take it on the go. Now, if I'm doing a higher level influencer campaign where they're paying me big bucks and I need to look professional, then I'll generally work with a professional. But your everyday stuff, I just do on my phone. Most of it ends up being story-based content anyway, which you do just record on your iPhone. So in terms of needing to have fancy equipment and letting that hold you back, that's not a deal breaker. So it's all about just being confident in yourself and your brand. And again, approaching the right kind of brands and knowing that they're going to resonate with your audience because above all, brands just want to work with people that are going to give them a return on investment and are actually going to have some kind of influence by way where it raises brand awareness and, uh, and gets their followers to come and connect with that brand in a way that they wouldn't have connected before because a person that they trust is endorsing the brand, so they're going to go and trust that brand as well. So, the key to establishing a really good brand and standing out to brands is to know your niche, understand your audience, really establish yourself in say three to four main areas. So say you're in the travel niche, then you wouldn't want to be talking to 
beauty products or fashion you like you could eventually go into this but when you begin you want to be quite niche specific so if you're in the travel niche you want to stick to things like flights tour companies hotels luggage things that are specifically travel related as your brand evolves and as your audience starts to like and trust you and know you more and really get to know you as a person then they'll trust you when you promote other things as well but when you're starting out you want to be niche specific this helps brands to actually determine whether you're the right fit for them as well because they'll know that you're in the right niche and that your audience is interested in what they've got um, so say you want to be in the fashion niche then you would look at things like clothes shoes accessories makeup um, beauty products that all comes into style and fashion so you really want to think about your niche and then only approach brands that are within that niche so that you're staying on brand you're staying legitimate and authentic to your own audience and you're sharing products that you genuinely use that are of interest to your audience because that's where you're going to get the most bang for buck for yourself and for the brand so the key to actually pitching brands and getting yes answers is to actually think about the brand and think about what you can provide that brand that other people can't. Why, why would they benefit from working with you over every other influencer? You need to really think about your point of difference and you need to show them that you've done your research. Show them that you know that brand inside out. Show them that you have a personal connection with that brand. So say for instance, for me, I approach a lot of clothing companies and a lot of the ones I approach are ones that are Australian labels and they're sustainably made in Australia. So the things that stand out to me is the fact that they're Australian. I love supporting local designers and so I tell them that and that they're sustainable. As somebody who loves to travel and loves the environment, I don't really like buying fast fashion. I like to buy things that are sustainably and ethically made. And so they're the brands I approach and I tell them that I have that, I have that personal connection with them and that I know my audience will also have that personal connection too because my audience is like me. And so when you add that human touch to it and you tell these brands why it is that you want to work with them, they're more inclined to say yes. Not only that, but do your research and actually go into specific products. If you're, if you're pitching a hair care company, for example, go to their website and say, I like that particular product because this is my hair type and this is why it will work really well for me. And I know that my audience will resonate with that as well. And even throw in personal stories about using the products in the past and things like that. The key that you're looking for here is to establish long-term relationships, not just one-time things. And this is where your audience will really start to form a connection with that brand as well and where the brand will really see the power in working with you over other people. You really want to be strategic about it and weave it in with your personal branding and with your own stories and your own lifestyle. And that's why you need to be pitching products and brands that are actually relevant to you and your audience because you want to stay authentic and you want to stay on brand so the people that you want to work with will want to work with you because they can see that you are a genuine person and you're not just in it for fun or to have a quick win and get some free products and get paid. And then the real key to pitching brands and actually getting yeses is to have a strong media kit. Now, if you don't know what a media kit is, this is exactly why you need to be on my workshop tomorrow because this is everything I'm going to be covering in there. I'm gonna be showing you every aspect of my media kit, what is needed to be in a powerful media kit, how long it should be, how to actually create one, and loads more stuff. And then I'm actually going to be walking you through how to actually send a media kit to a brand in a way that is going to get your yes. Because you can send a thousand emails, but the brands are busy. 
They don't want to spend hours scouring through your social media trying to figure things out for yourself. They want everything presented to them in a nice, simple way so that they can make a quick decision as to whether or not your brand is going to be the right one for them. And if you can't take the time to create a simple media kit, then they're going to question your professionalism, they're going to question whether you're serious about influencer work, and they're probably just going to overlook your email. So you really want to put some time and effort into creating a really good media kit because this is to the influencer what a resume is to somebody looking for a job. And it can't just be a Word document because you're here to be a content creator. So you need to have flair and design and creativity and show the brand what you're about so that when they look at that media kit, they understand your personality. They understand your likes, your dislikes, your audience and all of that kind of stuff. And so that is the real key to succeeding and branding yourself for success as an influencer. So if you would like to learn exactly how to create your media kit and how to pitch brands to get yes answers, then I would love to see you in my workshop tomorrow. You can register at the link in my bio or around this video. And I will see you there because I can't wait to help you brand yourself for success as an influencer. It is such an awesome, awesome industry to be in. And I know that when you follow this training, you will have all the tools you need to go out there and start pitching brands and actually getting yes answers. So I look forward to seeing you at the workshop. Bye for now.